guys. I was cleaning up uh, some of the mess after I pulled out 11 fans uh, for Andrew to take with him and this progress lighting was in one of the boxes that I pulled a fan out and I thought it was cool enough to take out and do a video uh, since I'd never actually tested one of these before. These are a kind of weird, very cool fan. They appear to be made by the same factory as Ritz and Moss. They have an identical cast iron spinner motor to Ritz fans. It's a big green cast iron motor. Moss fans have the same, uh, but in uh, gold paint instead of green. Evergo uses a similar green, but their motors are very different. Blades are real wood. They're very nice blades. It's called the uh, Apollo series, I believe, but the tag on top says... See if you can read it. It's model P2502, rated at 0.75 amps and 250 RPM. I uh, don't have the switch cap for it, which in this case is okay because I don't. The pull chain was broken, so I'm gonna have to change the wiring in order to uh, reverse the fan. It used the reverse pull chain. One pull was high, second pull was excuse me. One pull was forward, the second pull was reverse. And then it has a variable speed knob for the speeds. There you go, you can see that. So, uh, I just wired it up and I didn't know which one I was going to get. Um, so we'll try it with the amp meter and then we'll switch it into the other direction. So the variable speed control is set to the lowest setting. So when I turn it on, that is point zero eight. It does have a low speed trim, but I didn't mess with the low speed trim. This is the setting it would have came from the factory. I'm surprised it's so slow. Normally when you get these fans with the factory variable speed, it just goes from kind of a low medium to high. Like the new tone veranda I tested the other day. In this case, the uh, factory speed is very nice. It's in reverse, so I'll have to flip it for high. Turn it a quarter turn, or an eighth of a turn rather. It's a little buzzy. Now it draws 0.17. I thought about putting one of these in the museum, but I, I think to a lot of people this just looks like a fan. I don't think there's anything special about it to a lot of people. I could be wrong. Maybe it looks as weird to normal people as it does to collectors. Do another eighth of a turn. Takes us to 0.32. It's buzzy. It's not bad buzzy, but it's buzzier than I'd like. I like it to be silent. Do another eighth of a turn. I like how quickly that moves. That's indicative of um, motor being overpowered. It's fe I'm feeling some air from it, even though it's in reverse. Another eighth of a turn takes us to high. High is 0.73, which is very close to the rated amperage. I don't have a good enough eye to tell if that's the rated uh, RPM. It's definitely enough to make the uh, Emerson there. And I feel, yeah, I feel quite a breeze from it. So I'm going to power it down. I'm going to let it spin down here. I'm going to try to prep the camera. intent is that that's about centered. It's really hard to tell when I'm at it sitting down. So while it's doing that, power's off. I need to pull out the two wires that are connected to the capacitor. And this is it here. And I'm going to just be safe. I don't want to wire it wrong. I'm going to take this out. I tighten it by hand, but I guess... Uh, there you go. One of the things, I don't know if you noticed when I did a close-up, is that this plate here on the bottom of the motor is brass plated. I think that's a great idea. You know, you could call it a flywheel cover even though there's no flywheel, but it's the same principle. That's actually why Moss painted them gold, so it would kind of blend in. But, uh... Having a, a brass-plated plate over it is even better. 
So I'm going to disconnect the variable speed control from the white from the motor and one inside of the cap and connect it to the red from the motor on the other side of the cap. This is uh, like most permanent split capacitor one speed motors that then use an alternate form of speed control. There's just three wires from the motor. Uh, in this case, it's a hot and then a neutral for each coil. You could obviously you could reverse that and you'd have a hot for each coil and a neutral for everything. And um, to reverse it, um, one co one coil gets power through the cap. The other the other coil gets power directly. And reversing which coil gets power through the cap versus directions in the motor. That works for most permanent split capacitor motors, but not all. For example, mo oh, some K63 motors are not reversible that way. So. Okay, I'll turn the variable speed control to the lowest setting, put the knob back on it, and then let's power it back on. Okay, it's drawing 0 0.08, but it doesn't appear to be enough to get it started in this direction. Need a little push apparently. Haven't done anything to the bearings. Still drawing point zero eight. I'm going eighth of a turn. Eighth of a turn takes us to point eleven. The turn takes us to 0.19. Another eighth of the turn takes us to a rather buzzy 0.34. Another eighth of the turn takes us to 0.6. And then another eighth takes us to full power. Full power and high is 0.67. It's interesting, it draws a little bit more in reverse than it does in forward. Moves a ton of air though. It's quite a lot of airflow. These uh, cast iron spinner motor fans are, I think, they're on par with airflow as far as like a stack motor fan. Okay. Hi, yes, I think I said 0.67. And we will power down. I don't know if I mentioned it. I might have mentioned it already. These use a really odd mounting system that's kind of a really primitive form of ball socket. And uh, 
unfortunately the ball didn't fit in that standard bracket um, so I just have a regular ball socket down right on it so I can show you that real quick I'm to the camera without dropping it. so first of all there's the brass plated plate there in the center okay, and then over here this is the mounting bracket for it I wasn't able to use that there's the mounting bracket this is what would have fit in it if anything it's closest to the ones Fasco used which then also had a uh, um, belt canopy fit over it so that's the progress I hope you liked it I'd love to find an ornate one of these um, yeah especially an antique brass I'd love to find an ornate one so just putting that out there. Thanks for watching.